Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. We have some exciting news. We are moving yet again. If you have specific questions about that, I'm gonna try to answer them in today's video because we did a little Q&A over on Instagram talking about us moving, why we're moving again, where we're moving to. We also have a very exciting package right here that we just got in the mail, so I figured we could unbox it together while I answer some of your questions. So one of the first questions was, where are you moving to? And we are actually moving back into our RV. We're gonna be tiny living again, um, but we're also gonna be uh, living in our RV full time, but also traveling in our RV full time. There's something fun in this package that is actually for the RV that I'm very excited about. So this, oh my gosh, it's like so buttery smooth. Ah, it's even better in person. Can anyone guess what it is yet? She's beautiful. Oh my god. And the color is like so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I love it. The coolest thing. Okay, for one, if you haven't already figured it out, it's this like awesome um, power recliner armchair. Can you guys see that? So this is the chair and the reason we got this was because the chair that ours came with was like basically broken and falling apart. <laughs> it was like peeling off. So we ended up getting rid of it in our RV and uh, we saw this and fell in love. So it has like, it reclines, it doesn't take up a lot of space, so it's like perfect for small spaces like the RV. It even has a USB so you could charge your phone in the chair. So nice. Can't wait to show you guys what this looks like. Okay, as I'm getting this out of the box, I'm gonna answer the next question. Jay River says, are you going to travel or stay in, in your RV by the glamping camp? So we're actually gonna be traveling. We're not gonna stay here on the property. But Lion says, will you be coming through New Jersey on this round? So excited for this journey. We, we don't know exactly where we're going yet, but we know we're gonna be traveling all over. So um, if we are in New Jersey, definitely like stay tuned because I'd love to like meet up with you guys when we like travel to different areas. Okay, let's figure out the easiest way to unbox this. I'm sure there's an easier way of doing this. I always, like, for some reason, my brain always goes to, like, the hardest ways to do things. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. I brought in the you muscle. You me from a dream, now here's reality. Baby, baby, you are really hurting me. Cause every time... Don't mind my messy game room right now. Okay, next question. Is it hard to find privacy alone time in such a confined environment? That's a really good question, Lindsay. So I think that the best part about living in the RV is that we are outside way more than we would ever be in like a traditional home or house. So, and then we also like go out of our way to give our, to give like Travis and I to give each other like kind of space, but like in our RV, like the door is closed. So like if I wanted to be like alone, I could literally just shut the door to our bedroom. I don't know, our little family, we're always together. We like that, we like each other. And if for some reason we need some space, like we can go for a walk or, you know, one of us can get out and go do something or we just like shut the door. So <laughs> hopefully that answers your question. Simply Win says, does that mean you won't be moving back to your OG house? Those of you guys that have been following for a while, our uh, house, um, we will not be moving back into because that is a rental right now. And there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes um, that there is a reason why we're not going back there. And I, I mentioned it a little bit on Patreon because I don't really like to share too many things that are going on for a lot of reasons, but the camera uh, card was full, so I'm back now. So basically what I was saying was, yeah, there's just certain things that like are going on are making it so we're not able to go back there, unfortunately. So basically, hopefully that answers that question. We will not be moving back into that house, unfortunately. Tell me I'm good and bad, I'm doing fine, but nothing ever changes. I'm like blindly 
trying to put it in. I didn't even look at the directions on how to do this. Are you, I'm sorry, are you able to come back one more time? I actually need you for something. Okay. All right, love you, bye. Go ahead, you're good. Authentic. All thank you. What do you think? Yeah. Look at this, it's got recliners inside. It's got a USB port and a C port for us to be able to charge our phones and tablets. How cool is that? Now it's a, a, the only thing it's missing is a wine holder and a beer holder. <laughs> but I think they can make that as an accessory. Here is a wine holder. Yeah. And a beer true. holder right there built in. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. Hey, well, can you, let's plug this bad boy in. It out with the recliner section. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh, it literally is like buttery smooth. It feels so good. All right, let's see if it works. Wait, is that for me? Oh, oh, it's got a headrest. It's got a headrest too. No freaking way. All right, this is Oh my gosh, it keeps going. Okay, I could fully take a nap in this chair. It literally goes all the way back, you could sleep in this thing. This counts as a bed. Suddenly, the world I used to know, I see it differently. All right, don't mind my crazy outfit, but I had to show you guys, this is right up against the wall in our RV. This is why this is so perfect for small spaces, because we're in the RV, and look at this. It goes all the way out. In the RV, literally, it's like another sleeping situation in here. So if anybody is interested in this chair, um, the company Cheetah was nice enough to give us a coupon code. You can use ROSE15 for 15% 15 off, and I'll link it all in the description box below. So if you guys are in the market for a faux leather chair, uh, definitely go check out that link below. Also, I wanted to give a quick shout out to any of my Patreon members watching this video. Here is our latest video if you haven't watched already. I will link that down below for anyone else that's interested. Okay, so Tabitha is asking, how does this change things for Snow? You said last time it wasn't good for her. So what has changed? I, I believe she's referring to living in the RV and traveling full time. So. For those of you guys that don't know, we were traveling in our RV full time before we came here to this cabin. And I'm gonna get up because I feel like I'm kind of far away. Um, I don't wanna be able to explain this because I've talked about it a, a few times now already, but I know that not everybody watches every single video. And so um, I'll mention it again here for those maybe that have missed it. But Snow was misdiagnosed with ODD, which is Oppositional Defiant Disorder. It's often um, like misdiagnosed with PDA, which is pathological demand avoidance. Um, and that is what she has. It's basically where like, it just, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a neurological brain disorder that she has. And at first, um, when we thought that she had ODD, which is very, it's, it's treated very different than ODD. So for ODD, our psychiatrists and our doctors were like, she needs to be somewhere where she, um, you know, is gonna be in the same place every day where it's like, you know, routine, she goes to the same school, she sees the same kids, you know, instead of traveling all over and like, um, you know, not having like a set routine as far as like going to school, if that makes sense. When we found that out and we first originally got that diagnosis, we came back to California um, from traveling for almost a year and we immediately got her into a school. We bought a house, this cabin. Originally, we were planning on airbnb out the cabin and doing the camp, moving back into our old house. But then we came here, we fell in love. We were like, let's just live at the cabin. So then we were planning on living here and then something, a lot of it has been going on. Um, financially, we're not able to stay and live in the cabin, so we're going to have to Airbnb the cabin out like we had originally planned. So that's fine, um, but what we learned as soon as we put snow in school, like the first, I want to say like week, she loved it. It was so much fun for her. I think she was doing really well. Um, the teachers were saying like, you know, she doesn't really interact with the other kids. She really just wants to talk to the teachers. And I just thought, well, she just needs a little bit more time to like warm up to the kids. And then like the second week, the third week, she started regressing and getting way, way worse than she was before she started the school. 
And at first I just thought like, she just, you know, like I remember when I was younger and I, I've seen other kids, like they don't like going to school and you kind of just have to like kind of force them, you know, and then they get used to it. Um, so, and I feel like ashamed to say this, but that's kind of what I did, you know? And I just like kept telling Travis and everybody like, you know, she just needs to go to school. We just need to make her go. And she was having like severe, like severe anxiety. Um, about going to school and it got to the point where like after a couple months she of us thinking like okay she's gonna like get used to it and she'll be okay it was the opposite it just got worse and worse um, she was kicking screaming crying not wanting to even get in the car to go to school she kept saying I don't want to go to school I don't want to go to school and she started going to the bathroom in her pants again like peeing and pooping in her clothes and she wasn't sleeping at night. I hadn't personally taken her myself and dropped her off at school. Travis was and then we had nannies at the time and the nannies were taking them and the nannies were saying like she's having a really hard time. Like the teachers were having to like physically take her and like pull her off of the nannies and off of Travis to get her to go into the classroom. Like physically had to pick her, lift her up, carry her into the classroom. And then I don't really know what was going on in the classroom, although I do know that she was coming home in different clothes because she was soiling her clothes at school, meaning she was not going to the bathroom and she was regressing significantly. Um, this was obviously very difficult to watch um, as a parent. And I ended up saying like, you know, maybe it will work if I take her to school. And so, um, cause I was working doing online coaching during this time, which is why I wasn't able to take her to school. And I had other people helping me cause I was working. Um, so I decided to take her myself and I could just see like in her eyes, like for one, she like peed herself because she was so scared and just like, so like, panicked and like it was just it was awful she hated going to school it made her way worse and we realized that she doesn't have oppositional defiant disorder she actually has pathological demand avoidance and in that demand avoidance she will avoid at all costs doing something that's demanded of her so if she knows that she has to go to school or she has to do something um, or be somewhere at a certain time, it gives her severe anxiety, um, so much so to where it affected her eating, sleeping, um, going to the bathroom. I mean, like she regressed significantly. She wasn't communicating with us. Like it, it just was really bad. So after talking to many doctors, uh, we realized that her diagnosis was wrong and that she actually does not do well in a school setting with other kids. Um, now this is not the case for every kid that has PDA, but this is the case for Snow. And after talking to her doctors and realizing this, um, she actually does not thrive in routine like somebody with ODD would. So we have to treat <laughs> Snow very differently um, or she gets really bad anxiety. She won't eat, she won't sleep. Um, she just gets really, uh, dysregulated her uh emotional system whatever i don't know it's a neurological thing she can't control it so we didn't know this until we put her in school and put her in routine and we're doing the same things every day and we realize like she does not do well with that at all so um i hope that that answers your question i know it's a little long-winded but it's a lot to explain and it's hard for people to understand that don't have kids with special needs um, because a lot of special needs kids do need routine um, and that is very helpful for them and a lot of special needs kids go to special schools for them. Um, I was in a special school, I had an IEP so I'm very familiar with that um, and for people that are watching this that don't know what an IEP is, it's an individualized educational program for kids with special needs. Um, I had uh, special needs growing up with uh, learning disabilities and um, ADHD, which I didn't know that I even had then. I was also misdiagnosed um, with bipolar disorder, which we now know I do not have that. Um, I have a lot of other things, but not that. And so it could be very detrimental to kids that have mental health issues that struggle with special needs when um, we push or force certain things on them that we think 
uh, is going to be good for them, but we really have to listen to them and see how they're reacting to that situation and realizing that that's not good for them. So to answer your question, I think it's gonna be actually a lot better for Snow to be in the snowmobile because we call our RV the snowmobile because we do stay places for like a week at a time and then we get to go to a new place and we do something called road schooling or like homeschooling where like um, if you were kids and you were learning about something in a book, uh, you act, it's like having field trips every day, right? She gets to visit the actual places that we're reading about and learning about in the books. So she's only four years old. She's not even legally school aged yet um, to be going to school and have a curriculum. So this might change in the future, uh, you know, and if and when it does and she wants to go to school or she does well in a school setting, then we will reevaluate things. But with our family, things are always very up in the air. Things change a lot because she'll go through certain things and then she'll change. And so we never really know what our day is gonna be like, how things are gonna go. We've noticed even with the nannies, she was having a lot of hard time uh, with the nannies. They're, we've been doing a lot of different things, medication, like all kinds of stuff. And some things are working, some things don't. She is very interested in wanting to go in the RV. She says like, when are we gonna go in the snowmobile? I wanna sleep in my bunk bed. Like she's very excited for it. I think the kids will have fun. If at any point it's not fun for them or we notice that it's not a good thing for our kids, um, we will change that and then switch things up. But for now, I think that that's what's gonna be best for everybody and so that's what we're gonna do. Um, Kathy says, how will this affect Snow's progress? Again, I think that this is going to actually um, help with her progress because going to school and having a routine and being in the same place did not help her. We've noticed that by actually doing it, putting it into place and realizing that that's not an environment that she thrives in. She does not like routine. It gives her severe anxiety. And so even like waking up, brushing your teeth, putting your clothes on certain things, like we can't tell her to do that kind of stuff because again, it will affect her really negatively and I know it's really hard to understand to people that have never dealt with someone with PDA before especially with kids it's almost like you do the opposite of everything you've been taught to like discipline and parent children we have to like unlearn all of that and do things very differently with her yeah I think that it'll be a good thing if for any point in time that's not we will change what we're doing mrs. Nikki says do you notice a difference in the kids behavior in the house versus on the road yes I do. I feel like the kids get a lot more of our attention in the RV than they do in the house. To do a lot more things with them, we get to travel and see a lot more places instead of just the same place all the time or the same playground all the time. So I think the kids really like that um, variety. Did you find a way so Snow is okay with living in the RV? If yes, what? Love y'all. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of Snow questions. And it makes sense because, you know, we gave up kind of RV life for Snow so that she could go to school and be in one place and give her that routine that we thought she really needed. But like I said, we quickly realized after, you know, six months or however long it was in school that she was just really not doing well at all. And her psychiatrist is actually the one that suggested we pull her out of school and homeschool her and see how that went. And that went a lot better. That's just going to kind of be what we're doing right now is whatever works for her. And if anything changes, which I'm sure it will, then we adjust as you know, we go and that's kind of how we've been doing things. So yeah, I think our plan is to uh, move back into the snowmobile and then we're going to go stay at my sister's for a while and be somewhere where she's familiar and then kind of see how she goes. So we're gonna be taking it easy and slow at the very beginning with traveling. We're gonna stay like put kind of like at a family member's house for a while and then kind of see how she does and then, you know, go from there. And also like, just so everybody knows, some people forget, like we've been doing YouTube and filming our lives like way before we had kids. I've been doing this for 10 years. I've always kind of documented and done daily vlogs, or not daily vlogs, sorry, but like vlogged. I think that if anyone's watched our, our story, you know, we had to do IVF. We had a really hard time getting pregnant. It took us four years and a lot of like loss and heartbreak and, infertility and I literally spent every penny I had um, on IVF treatments in order to have my kids and my whole world revolves around them and everything I do, I do for them. 
I just want anybody watching this to know that we would never put her or her brother in a position that wasn't the very best for them. All I want is for my kids to have the best life possible and I'm not perfect and I'm gonna make mistakes but I'm doing the very best I can as a parent and I love my kids very much, uh, more than anything in the world and I'm just doing my best to do what's best for them. If at any point in time I feel like, you know, traveling um, in the RV is not fun for them, then we won't do that anymore. I made that very clear as soon as her doctor said like, no, she needs to go to school. You know, we like stopped everything and went and put her in school and then that didn't work out very well. So right now I think that we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah, and I and I just am hoping everything goes well for her sake. Um, I think also in the RV, like we don't have to pay like a huge mortgage, so I don't have to work as hard and as much, and I'm able to spend a lot more of my time with her um, and kind of give her that extra love and attention that she needs. So that's another like big part of doing the whole RV living thing is like really I think beneficial for her, so I'm able to spend more time with her. I just wanted to kind of like put that out there because I know that. You know, some people are like, oh, you're just like living in the RV and traveling all around for you and your poor kids like have to be drug around and you know, living in that small space. And honestly, like it's really fun. I think that our kids prefer to live in the motor home as opposed to like this huge mansion cabin. They've literally lived in like two mansion houses and they prefer the RV. They're always asking to go in there. They want to sleep in their little bunk beds. We have bunk beds in this cabin and they're so cool. And like, I try to make it really fun for them they want to go in the RV bunk beds. It's just fun for them. It's kind of like, I don't know. It's like, maybe it's a kid thing when they get older, maybe that won't be the case. And then, you know, I don't think we're going to be living in the, R the RV like our whole lives, you know, especially like when they get older, we will do everything kind of revolving around them. So yeah, that's about it. I think that's all the questions I had so far. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this little Q and A video. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching. I'm sending you all my love and all my positive energy and I hope to see you in the next video. Mwah.